Today I'm going to be going over how to install a 6 channel amplifier in a 22 Hyundai Elantra N with the Bose Premium Sound System. These steps will also work for other 22 and newer Elantras with the Bose Premium Audio System. By installing a multi channel amplifier, you will be bypassing the factory amp. Also, this install video will show wiring into the factory speaker wires, but alternatively, you could run speaker wires from each speaker directly to the amplifier and forego using the factory speaker wires. This install would be a must for anyone installing power-hungry or premium-grade aftermarket speakers. It will provide an improvement in sound quality and better volume control. If you're installing entry-level or mid-tier aftermarket speakers and are okay with the vehicle's overall volume level, then an aftermarket amp, although nice, wouldn't be required. In my previous video, I only had a 10-inch subwoofer installed. The subwoofer required a minimum of 8 gauge wire to be used for power and ground. For this install, I'm upgrading the power wire to 0 gauge. I could get away with 4 gauge, but I want to make my setup future proof. If you already have your power wire installed, you can skip to 3 minutes and 35 seconds. In case you missed my previous videos, I'm going to start this install with the power wire again. You'll want to begin with removing a 12 millimeter bolt that secures the battery's retention plate. Next. Remove the positive and negative wires from the top of the battery. You may now remove the battery. This will make running the power wire into the cabin much easier. There is a large grommet behind the battery that will allow easy access through the firewall. Using a sharp tool, punch a hole close to the top away from the main wiring harness through the grommet. I chose to use a flat head screwdriver to reduce the risk of cutting any of the wires. Once this is completed, you can start feeding the power wire through the grommet. I recommend using a wire fish line to help feed the wire through the grommet. After the wire has been fed through the grommet, you can reinstall the battery. When installing 8 gauge wire, I was able to install the power wire through the back of the plastic positive terminal cover. With the larger 0 gauge wire, I couldn't do that, so I used my Dremel and cut a half circle in the side of the plastic cover. This allowed me to retain the function of the factory cover and would be easy to replace if needed. The power wire can be ran down the driver's side of the car. I ended up using a total of 16 feet. This included the amount ran from the fuse to the battery terminal. The power wire will need to go underneath the interior side panels, which are easy to remove. You'll start with the driver's kick panel. To remove it, you will pull out the hood release handle. You should be able to do this without the need for any tools. Then pop the panel and pull it towards the driver's seat. Next, you'll need to remove the rubber seal around the front and rear door. The bottom plastic door sills can then be popped up using a plastic trim tool. To get the power wire into the trunk, you'll want to remove the back seat cushion. This can be accomplished by locating the two 12 millimeter bolts in the back of the seat. Once both bolts are removed, you can lift up the cushion and pull out the back seat. There will be one more small plastic door sill cover to remove. This small panel is held in place with a screw. Remove the screw and pull the panel up. I put the panels back in place after the power wire was ran. After the power wire has been ran, it's time to run the signal and speaker wires. To access these wires, you'll need access to the Bose amplifier located on the passenger side of the trunk. Begin by removing the plastic cover at the end of the trunk. There are two plastic bolts that can be removed by hand and one plastic retaining bolt that needs to be removed using a plastic trim removal tool. Once these bolts are removed, you can pop the panel up and remove it from the trunk. The carpeted panel covering the amplifier has a bolt which is used for holding the trunk net in place. This bolt can be unscrewed by hand. There's also a plastic bolt that needs to be removed with a trim tool. Both are located towards the rear of the car. After removing the two bolts, you can pull the panel back and move it to the side for access of the Bose amplifier. The Bose amplifier is held in place with three nuts. The nuts can be loosened, allowing the amp to be slid back and removed. Unplug both amp wiring harnesses. The black plug, or in some cars, the green plug, will house all the speaker wires. You'll need to remove a section of the black tape covering the wires. Cut the wires, leaving enough room to reconnect them if need be. I used a female spade connector on the signal wire and a male connector on the speaker wire at the plug. This way, I could always reconnect the factory wiring easily. When you cut the wires, the wire still 
connected to the plug is the signal wire. These wires go to the signal input of the amplifier. The wires detached from the plug are the speaker wires and are ran to the speaker output of the amplifier. I used 18 gauge wire to run the signal and speaker wires. I'm installing an audio control amplifier which will accept up to 14 gauge wire. The wire kit I purchased provided all the colors I needed. I color coordinated the new wires to the factory wires and needed about 5 feet for each of the speakers and signal positive and negative wires. I used wire ferrules for the speaker wire ends and bare wire for the signal wire ends. The amplifier's signal wire terminals were too small for the ferrules. I twisted the wires using a power drill. I'm including a wire diagram. Please feel free to pause the video and review the diagram. Take note there is a slight difference in colors based on the plug color of your car. I'm also including a list of all the wiring used in this install. The only wire you will need in the other amp harness is the remote turn on or accessory on wire. This wire will not need to be cut. You simply tap into the wire. It's located in the white or in some cars yellow wiring harness and is blue with a pink stripe or solid blue. I ran this wire to the subwoofer and amplifier. To run the ground, I found an easily accessible spot both in the trunk and underneath the car on the driver's side of the trunk. This location allowed me to install a bolt for the larger zero gauge ground. Be sure to scrape the paint before installing the ground. I wanted to keep my install simple and visible, so I made a simple amp wiring rack out of hardboard and MDF. The hardboard was used as a place to secure the ground distribution block, and the MDF was used as an amp rack. I painted both pieces black and was able to secure the MDF in place by using the spare tire bolt. Also, I used a Dremel to make a line in the back of the factory trunk cover. This allowed for a simple hinge when lifting the factory trunk liner. I did not cut the carpeted rubber trunk liner that I have on top of the factory trunk mat. Since this is a 2 amp system, I used both a power and ground distribution block. I ran 0 gauge power and ground to the audio control amplifier and 4 gauge power and ground to the subwoofer. The amplifier I chose has a built-in line out with AccuBase controls. This allowed me to run RCA wires to the subwoofer and control the sub the same way I did previously with the audio control LC2i. Once all the wires were ran, it was time to hook up the subwoofer and set up the amplifier. Please see my subwoofer install video for more details about how to hook up the subwoofer. Some things to note. Using the amplifier's built-in clipping detection, I found clipping occurred after the volume is turned up past 67 to 70, depending on the quality of source material. This is the same volume level that I made sure not to exceed when using the factory Bose amplifier. I found no issue with the chimes in the car once the signal was amplified. I had to sum the front and rear channels to get a full range signal to the front and subwoofer speakers. I didn't use the subwoofer output signal for this install, so you do not need to cut the subwoofer's wires. This may change when I add a DSP. I ran front, rear, and center into the amp. Channels 1 and 2 were for the front, 3 and 4 were for rear, and 5 and 6 were for the center. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment with any questions or suggestions. I will leave a link to all items used in this install in the video description.